In Lumos, element sizes, font sizes, and spacing are all connected to the size variable folder here. So if we look at our size variable folder, it has many different sizes we can choose from. It has a lot more variation with the smaller sizes. And then with the larger sizes here, we have fewer options, but it still goes up to 16 rim here. And these sizes automatically reduce on each breakpoint. So that's being handled inside our custom code inside the responsive embed. And what we'll notice is that all our size variables reduce on tablet breakpoint and reduce again on landscape. And the larger sizes lose much more. So they're like half their original size. And some of these in between sizes aren't quite half the original size here. And some of the smaller sizes either don't shrink at all or they only lose a little bit of the original size. And this keeps our small values from getting too small. Now we can apply these to anything. Here we have this icon, it's five rim. If we actually want that to reduce on each breakpoint, we can go to the size folder and pull up our five rim variable. And if we had a five rim gap or maybe five rim section spacing, that value is gonna match when it changes across breakpoints. Now the great thing about this is any variable can reference those sizes. So here for our H1 font size, we can choose any value from our size folder and these sizes will automatically reduce on each breakpoint. Another place we're using this is for our padding vertical. These are the top and bottom section spacing values we have and then a couple different values depending on how much space we need. These values are automatically reducing on each breakpoint because they're referencing that size folder. And our smallest top and bottom section spacing here is five rim. Now another folder we have is our space folder and this is for spacing apart elements within a section. And even when we use our largest space here, it's still smaller than that five rim section space. So the elements never feel like they're in two separate sections. So here's how we can control how we space apart elements within a section. On these button wrap here, we're spacing apart these buttons with extra small from that space folder. Between the heading and the paragraph, we're going with space small from that folder. Between the eyebrow and the heading and also the paragraph and the buttons, we're going with space medium. And between this text and this image, we went with space large. So that when everything stacks, these buttons are still closer to the paragraph than they are to the image because we're using medium here and large here. And when the buttons wrap, they're really close together because we went with space extra small. So we can really just create some nice harmony here by grouping together related elements. Now on our container class, it has the default top and bottom uh, section padding of the main value by default. So we can change that out if we want large or small for this one section. I can hold option and click to apply to both top and bottom. And now we have our small value. Now sometimes instead of baking the section spacing into the class name, we'll need to control it based on where the component's used. So if we have a dark section following this, it looks perfectly fine. But if we were to have a light section, now there's too much space between these two and we may need to reduce this bottom space on this section. So to control this instead of from the class name, we can control this from data attributes. And here we have a data padding top and we can set this to none if we want none. We could go ahead and do small, we can go ahead and do main, or we can do large, any of our different variables there. So I'm gonna leave main on here. And the great thing about this is if we turn this whole section into a component, I'll just call this my section for now, we can go ahead and link these data attributes to component fields. So on this value, I need to make sure that I'm including this name in here, so padding top. So I'll include that in a folder called styles and I'll call this padding top. And then I'll do the same thing for padding bottom. I'll create a folder here and called styles and inside that I'll put padding bottom and create. And so now we can actually adjust this from component fields and the Lumos Chrome extension automatically adds these buttons for us based on our different values. So I can set small, main, large, or even none, depending on what I need to do here. Now these buttons are being created based on the value in our custom code embed inside this base here. So we'll notice that these are our different data attributes. And whenever we have a data padding top of large, that applies a padding top of our large 
Webflow variable. So if we wanted to add another set of variables to this, maybe we want to create an extra large variable inside our padding vertical. We can just copy this and paste it in. We'll say whenever there is a data padding top or bottom with a value of extra large, we'll just connect that to the extra large Webflow variable. And that's how we can add new section spacing values to our embed. And then we would just need to refresh Webflow to see the button at it. Now, sometimes we'll want more control over how a variable adapts instead of just the pre-built adaptive sizes. So this display heading, we might want it to shrink a little bit more than it's doing now. And for our left and right padding here, it's set to our padding horizontal, which is 3RIM here on desktop. And it actually shrinks a lot more than 3RIM normally would. And the way that's being done, if we open our custom code in our responsive embed, We'll notice that that padding horizontal is being overridden here on the tablet breakpoint to be two rim from that three rim value. And then on landscape, we've overridden it again to be one rim. So three rim usually would, would not be one rim, but we've made this shrink a lot more. And we can override any variable like that on any breakpoint. So here on tablet, we might take our display font size and we might set that to be 3.5 rim, and it's going to override the way display would normally work with adaptive sizes. And on that next breakpoint, it basically is gonna shrink it a lot more than it normally would otherwise. If I undo, we'll see this is the size it normally was. Now to take responsiveness to even the next level, we can use the Lumos Fluid Builder. And this is gonna convert all font sizes, all of the size folders to responsive right off the bat. We can control the desktop and mobile version for any variable specifically we'd like. And we can just copy all this code, head over to our responsive embed, and inside that, we can replace all the standard adaptive sizes we had um, with fluid sizes instead. So we'll just paste in the code from our embed. And now, again, the larger sizes are going to shrink at a greater rate, just like they were doing with the adaptive values. But now it's actually completely fluid all the way down. Lastly, to apply our spacing, we have gap utilities. This is a quick and easy way to apply any space, and it's automatically linked to the space folder for us.